would guess that most of you are aware that the failure rate of new businesses is very high. What you might not know is that the outlook for the largest, most valuable public companies in the U.S. is not much better. Experts at Yale and McKinsey have recently stated that the average life expectancy of S&P 500 companies is less than 20 years. In other words, the average large public company will probably not be around as long as the neighbor's special cat, Fluffy. <laughs> and this raises some interesting questions like, what causes these successful companies with proven business models to die so quickly? And perhaps most important, is there a cure? Although, of course, there are many symptoms that contribute to the failure of these companies, there seems to be one root cause of death. Their top priorities are in the wrong order. The good news is that when we understand this root cause of death, the cure becomes obvious. We simply reorder the priorities. And applying this cure not only helps companies to survive, it can help leaders in all types of organizations to achieve extraordinary levels of long-term success. But let's start with the root cause of failure. Most leaders I'm aware of behave as though their top priorities are in this order. First, profit, or other goals of the organization. Then, customers. Then, employees. And while this might just seem to be business as usual, making profit the top priority essentially guarantees the premature death of the organization. Here's why. When leaders make profit the top priority, they will either consciously or unconsciously neglect employees in a systematic way. When employees are consistently neglected, they become increasingly disengaged over time. As a result, customer service declines, product quality declines, and innovation is much less likely to occur. In other words, the organization will fail to serve the customer well. And any organization that fails to serve the customer well will not survive very long. The great leaders, who not only help their organizations to survive, but achieve extraordinary long-term results, see their top priorities like this. Above all else, love employees. When we love employees well, they take very good care of the customers, and the goals of the organization are much more easily achieved. By love, I don't mean going around telling everyone, I love you, being all touchy-feely, holding hands and singing Kumbaya. By love, I mean doing whatever we can to improve the long-term well-being of our team members. The best leaders are always thinking about how they can help their people to grow and to thrive, both professionally and personally. And the well-being of employees is a filter for every decision they make. If a course of action would negatively impact the long-term well-being of employees, it is eliminated as an option. Now, by nature, I am terrible at this. I am hardwired to be a type A, goal-driven, selfish jerk. And I'm serious. And my obsession with goals actually led to my greatest failure. In January of 2001, I tried to take a shortcut to success. I attempted a fraud against the government and ended up spending five and a half years in prison as a result. But about two years into my time in confinement, I had a deeply transformative experience that inspired me to make love my top priority. This turned my time in confinement into the most meaningful experience of my life. So for the last 17 years, while on my journey from prisoner to monk to social entrepreneur, I have devoted my life to training to consistently love better and studying why it's so beneficial to make love the top priority. And I have found an abundance of evidence demonstrating that making love the top priority is not only the right thing to do, it is the surprising secret of the best leaders. A great example of this is Herb Kelleher, the founder and longtime CEO of Southwest Airlines. For decades, Herb was known for consistently interacting with employees in a way that made them feel loved. He was also known for coming in on the most important family holidays, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, to work side by side with frontline people, helping them do things like pass out peanuts on flights and load suitcases onto airplanes. Herb believed that the best way to lead any team or any organization is to make love the top priority. To say that Herb was successful with this practice would be a tremendous understatement. We could make a good case that relative to their industry, Southwest is the most successful company in U.S. history. They have been profitable for 46 years straight. That is extremely impressive in any industry, 
In the cutthroat airline industry, it is almost inconceivable. And to achieve this remarkable feat, Herb never laid off a single employee and never once cut pay. Herb Kelleher is not alone, though. Many other leaders have proven this principle. In a landmark study conducted by Harvard researchers Cotter and Heskett, they tracked 207 publicly traded companies over a period of 11 years. Companies with leaders who were intentional about making it a top priority to take good care of employees outperformed their profit-focused competitors by a huge margin. Over 11 years, the people-focused companies increased their net income by an average of 756%. The profit-focused companies increased their net income by only 1%. This translated into a 901% increase in stock price for the people-focused companies versus only a 74% increase for the profit-focused companies. There are many, many reasons to lead with love as the top priority. This is the key to attracting and retaining fully engaged employees, to delivering world-class customer service, and to being agile and innovative enough to avoid becoming obsolete. But here is the primary reason that leading with love, making love the top priority, is the most effective way to lead. Influence. At its most basic definition, leadership is the ability to influence the actions of others. And the healthiest, most sustainable, and most effective way to build influence is to consistently love the people we lead. For example, in the year 2000, although Southwest had been profitable for 28 years in a row, they were facing some serious financial challenges. There was a chance they wouldn't make a profit that year. So Herb Kelleher sent a memo to all of the nearly 30,000 Southwest employees, asking each of them if they would just do their best to save $5 per day for the rest of the current quarter. You could imagine how that would go over in profit-focused companies. <laughs> Most employees would think, whatever, and go right back to wasting time on social media. But Herb's memo was different. It wasn't really anything special except for the way he signed it. He signed it, Love Herb. It's special because he actually meant it. And every Southwest employee knew that he meant it. They remembered him coming in on Thanksgiving and Christmas to work side by side with them. They remembered him consistently demonstrating that he loved them year after year after year. Those people found a way to save $5 per day. In fact, they saved almost twice as much. And Southwest, of course, had another profitable year. This is the influence we create when people know that we truly care about them. Sadly, we lost Herb Kelleher earlier this year. He died on January 3rd. After a private funeral for Herb's immediate family, Southwest planned a public service. They knew that they would probably need a football stadium, or maybe two, to accommodate all of the people who would want to attend. They decided to keep the ceremony more intimate, and they only invited the friends and Southwest family members who were closest to Herb. Over 5,000 people attended. During the two-hour memorial, speaker after speaker shared emotional examples of how Herb had positively impacted them and so many others. And this brings us to the most important reason to make love the top priority. If you spend the rest of your career leading with love as the top priority, you will look back one day and realize that you made a significant, positive impact on the people around you, and that you empowered them to make a positive impact on many others. And as I think we all know, somewhere deep inside of us, this is probably the only measure of success that truly matters. Thank you. Thank you.